Hello, my name is Vaughn Armstrong. I'm the concertmaster or first violin of the Virginia Symphony Orchestra. And welcome to this Virginia Symphony Orchestra video lecturette on interpretation and style in music. I think music, listening to it, studying it, playing it, has a great power to take our minds off things in the best way, to soothe fraying nerves, to provide structure to our days, and most importantly, to reconnect with our own humanity, and by extension, with our common shared humanity with everyone else. So the topic of this chat is interpretation and style in music. I have two main ideas to suggest to you, which I've come to believe very passionately over my lifetime in music. The first is, music is about something. That something may be joy or sorrow or love or anger or most likely something more complex or abstract. But it's about something and fundamentally that something is being human. This may sound obvious, but it's so easy to forget. Playing our instruments is so complicated and difficult, we can focus all our attention on that and almost without realizing our music becomes instead about being a machine. This is not to say that we don't value precision and accuracy. It is, in fact, very human to appreciate those things. But they are a means to an end, a way to make our expression more pure and powerful and direct, but uh, not an end in themselves. The second big idea I'd like to propose is you are a person. Give yourself permission to be an artist. I'll share two stories to try to explain what I mean. Many years ago, when I was a student at Juilliard, my teacher, Dorothy DeLay, scoffed at the idea that only a select few had the capability of being musical. Bah, she said something like it. Being musical is about having feelings, and everybody has feelings. You are a person, you have feelings, just like everybody else. The second story happened just a few years later. I was at a summer music festival, and as a lark, decided to sign up for a blues improvisation seminar. There were people of all ages and levels of expertise there, from professional musicians like me, on down to a young girl, maybe around eight years old, who was pretty much a beginner on violin. As I recall, uh, she had not learned vibrato yet. She played only in first position. This was not some amazing prodigy. She was a beginner. We were taking turns trying to improvise solos. It came to her turn. What she played was simple, but beautiful. When she finished, the room was stunned. While her technique was absolutely rudimentary, the purity of spirit was breathtaking. What I learned was that you don't have to have an amazing technique to be an artist. Don't wait until some far off time. Get started today. Now, it does remind me of the old joke, you don't have to be crazy to work here, but it helps. Similarly, you don't have to have an amazing technique to be an artist, but it does help. <laughs> but too many people put off being artistic in their mindset, thinking they're not ready. Those people are cheating themselves and those around them. And here's another thing. Technique and musicality are like two sides of a ladder. You need both if you're going to climb. They complement and underpin each other. A desire to create a certain musical idea reveals a technical limitation, let's say. Removing the limitation through creative practice frees the imagination to seek further musical ideas. But the musicianship, the artistry, the desire for expression and beauty are central to the process of improving your technique. So now you're saying, okay, you win, music is about something, and sure, I give in, I'm a person, I've given myself permission to be an artist. Now what? Good question. So now we'll talk a little about interpreting music on the page. First principle to realize is that music manuscript is extremely limited in what it tells us. It's like a recipe for a delicious dish, which is missing several key magical ingredients. So our communication with the composer is compromised a bit. But just as we are human, we are persons, so too is the composer. We should be as compassionate as we can. Read everything the composer has written, even if it's in a funny language. Try your best to do the things that are indicated, even if they seem strange or awkward to you, or more likely, 
just plain difficult. I was fortunate to study chamber music at Juilliard with Robert Mann, the founding first violinist of the renowned Juilliard String Quartet. Speaking about Beethoven's sometimes puzzling and challenging dynamic markings, he said, think about Beethoven in the history of music. Certainly one of the greatest composers who ever lived, probably a greater musician than anyone you will ever meet in your life. Don't you think you should at least consider doing it the way he says? But doing what's written on the page will get you only so far. My guiding principle here is compassion and imagination and a conviction that whatever piece I'm playing, it's better than I think it is. A couple more stories. Again, back in my Juilliard days, the Juilliard Symphony was abuzz with the news that Sir Georg Scholte, one of the greatest conductors of the 20th century, was coming to conduct our orchestra. Repertoire to be announced. What would we play? Mahler? Strauss? Well, the news came. Dvorak New World Symphony. This felt like a very familiar piece, one we'd all been playing since youth orchestra days. Didn't he realize that we already knew that one? Well, one of the most thrilling orchestra rehearsals of my life. I learned that while I thought I knew Dvorak's New World Symphony, in fact, I had barely scratched the surface of that particular gold mine. There was a depth of character and richness that I had never imagined. The piece was much better than I thought it was. This has proven true in lesser known pieces as well. Many is the time that I prepared and rehearsed a totally new composition, developing an opinion as I go, and then played it for the composer. Sometimes I out and out don't like the piece. Maybe it seems dull or boring. The composer, however, almost always has some stylistic suggestion that makes it much better, something that they didn't have a way to write down. So compassion and empathy for the composer. Like you, they are a person. Keep applying creativity and imagination. Their pace just may be better than you think it is. Well, we can't wrap up without discussing one really big way to expand your understanding of interpretation and style. Copying other people. Wait, what? Artists don't copy. Think about your favorite recording. Did that person copy someone else? No way. Think about premiere recordings of new pieces. Who are you going to copy now? At some point, you have to make up your own mind about things. That's the artist's way. Don't copy. Steal instead. All artists steal and will readily cop to it. They talk about influences. The difference is the copier is lazy and makes no personal decisions. The stealer, the thief, takes only what they like and mixes it with other bits of loot they've pilfered from hundreds of places and comes up with something entirely their own. So steal away. Don't just listen to one recording and copy it. Listen to 10 recordings and steal your favorite things from each of them. Go to live concerts every chance you get. Remember what you like and steal it. Thank you for watching. Stay healthy and keep practicing. It's the artistic thing to do.